Sitting in an airplane and watching them fly is a common thing for us now. But once upon a time, a machine-like airplane was also imagined as a miracle. We all know that the first aircraft was officially built by the Wright brothers, but they weren't the only ones who tried to turn this fantasy into reality. From the 17th to the 19th century, many scientists built many aircraft, and as we can guess, they all failed. But the story is not about all of them, it is about some of them. Some of the great minds who have made such efforts, which were very close to success. Here we take a look at three such great efforts that were very close to becoming the world's first aircraft. Pictured above is Marquis de Bacqueville, an eccentric French nobleman, best known for his attempt at human flight in 1742. His full name was Jean-Francois Boivin de Bonnetot. On March 19, 1742 in Paris, de Bacqueville announced his intention to fly from one side of the River Seines to the other. He had built a set of four paddle-like wings and attached them to his arms and legs, and his plan was to leap from the roof of a building on the Rue des saint spires and fly across the river to the Tuileries Gardens. A crowd had formed to witness the event, and after de Bacqueville was satisfied with his apparatus, he jumped from the roof, beating his wings furiously. To the crowd's surprise, he caught a breeze and seemed to be gliding successfully. The flight, which was recorded by famed French philosopher Rousseau in his review de la Normandie, appeared to be going well until the Marquis was about halfway over the river. He reportedly began to waver, possibly due to the wind, fell to the deck of a boat on the river, and broke one of his legs. Although he didn't get success, but at that time, when all this was considered impossible, an attempt that was half successful inspired many people. Pictured above is a photograph of Jean-Marie Labrisse's flying machine, called El Albatros Artificial, which is French for artificial albatross. This is the first recorded photograph taken of the flying machine, and it shows Labris in the pilot seat of his glider, resting on a wooden cart before takeoff. This is the second version of his craft, called Albatross II, which was modified from the original version with refinements. Based on the aerodynamic quality of an albatross wings, Labris invented the artificial albatross glider, which was shaped like the bird itself. With a wood frame and covered in cloth, its wingspan was 50 feet. The pilot sat inside, almost like in a canoe, and used levers to operate the movements of the wings and tail. The glider was put on top of a cart which itself was attached to a horse that ran against the wind. At this point, the artificial albatross was released from the cart and began to rise into the air. Labrist took his albatross to a beach and, using a horse and cart to get up to speed, flew for 660 feet and reached a height of up to 330 feet, the first time a heavier-than-aircraft flew higher than its original point of departure. On his second flight, the albatross reportedly crashed and Labrist broke his leg. Labris and his artificial albatross made significant steps in the human quest for flight. Once again, an individual from an unrelated background became obsessed with the dream of human flight. Hiram Maxim was an inventor, who had found tremendous success with the Maxim machine gun, the first self-powered recoil-operated machine gun. In 1892, Maxim used part of his fortune to build an airplane test rig that had six tiers of detachable wings, a 110-foot wingspan, two steam engines, and two propellers, each over 17 feet long. The test rig was never meant to actually fly and was locked onto an 1,800-foot long track. Maxim intended for it to test the effects of lift on different wing shapes and configurations. During its third test in 1894, the 7,000-pound rig with Maxim and three others on board broke free of its track flying 200 yards at 38 miles per hour and just a few feet above the ground before it crashed back down again. Maxim abandoned the test rig soon, afterwards concluding that the engines of the day weren't efficient enough to compensate for their own weight. Despite that, he predicted that, under the most unfavorable circumstances, aerial navigation will be an accomplished fact inside of 10 years. 
So these were three such great efforts, which were very close to being called the world's first aircraft. If you think this video is informative, do like this video and subscribe our channel. May technology bless you.